Round two of the season is set to kick off here from the streets of Long Beach. A great venue to race at Lee. It puts drivers to the test every year, and we'll do it again this weekend. Let's see what the drivers are up to. Let's head to the on-track action. We're set to take on our first street race of our IndyCar career today from the streets of Long Beach. Colton Herta won the Million Dollar Challenge last episode, but that didn't count for points. We go back to the first actual points race of the season where Scott Dixon was able to pick up the victory. While we ended up P11 in our, you know, IndyCar debut, I wasn't uh, too disappointed uh, by that one. As you can see, the rest of the finishing order from round one there. If you remember McLaughlin, Newgarden, Erickson, they got the strategies completely wrong wrong as we head to the racetrack in Long Beach for our third race in IndyCar, our second points paying race in IndyCar. Now, uh, as I have decided, we're going to post the IndyCar career mode more often uh, compared to the real season, uh, just because the season, it's only like 17 rounds and it takes a whole year. Uh, so we're going to try and do it like two and a half seasons per year, you know, one a week, two a week sometimes as well. Uh, but I get another career mode series on the way soon that I think uh, you guys will also enjoy, but I'm not going to spill the beans on that one. It's a bit of a surprise, but I was pretty happy with how the car was driving here in qualifying. We got our first top 10 last episode, although it didn't count for anything. The only thing that counted last episode was winning $1 million, and that went to Colton Herta. Can he carry that momentum here into Long Beach? I think that's really the big question, as you can see myself here in practice getting the elbows out right here on the fresh McLaren driver, David Malukas, but we were able to complete the overtake on him here in practice. It's a 35 lap race just like the million dollar challenge race was uh last episode in willow springs with a field run you know basically being up towards the 25 lap point so uh we can run pretty lengthy in this grand prix uh for this weekend here but i was very happy with the pace i went p3 in practice on friday and i was getting some experience running around of course uh joseph newgarden here the last is an indy 500 winner but actually got wing damage as it was so slow on the exit of the final turn so that would kind of give me a premature ending uh, to practice and really just put us in a position to focus in on qualifying here Saturday afternoon. Uh, and what can we put up on the board? Because qualifying, when it comes to IndyCar, kind of feels like a weak spot for me so far because, of course, you, you really have to be confident, comfortable with the car and, and put it on the edge uh, and, and be ready to just, just put it all on the line to be able to run up towards the front of the leaderboard. So we would focus in now on qualifying get ready to roll here from long beach and really the main goal is to not crash the car uh, and just get the best starting position we can uh you know really trying to aim for the top 20. turn one we get two laps of qualifying here but i immediately make a mistake a tank slapper and actually clip the barrier with my rear wheel which uh, basically invalidates the lap it didn't damage the car thankfully colton Herta currently on pole over Scott McLaughlin, Newgarden, Grosjean, and Alex Pelot, the defending champion. Now, as we go down through turn number one, this time a little bit more cautious. This whole lap, I kind of felt like a more cautious vibe due to my mistake on the lap before. So this is the only lap that we're going to be able to get in uh, a time, of course, and that's assuming we don't uh, invalidate it by hitting anything, which hopefully we don't here now. As I was pretty happy with how it was going in terms of just getting around the track here. Watch that leaderboard, though. Colton Herta. He's at the top, but not anymore. Christian Lungard, now Pato Award and Will Power go top two. Pato Award, after a disastrous start in uh, the season, is going to rebound to a pole position over Power. Lungard as well in the top five, and same for the rookie of Kiffin Simpson. Lundqvist up there, but for me, it's not going to be as pretty. We only managed to go 23rd as Award gets pole position, uh, as you see the rest of the starting order. But we'll start P23 in front of Jack Carvey. Some work to do. Let's head to the grid on the streets of Long Beach. Pato Ward up front alongside Will Power as we're ready to kick off the first street course race of our season. Um, these guys have a big challenge here. They will have a heavy braking zone uh, into turn one, which will be a challenge uh, with them all clumped together. It's time for racing in Long Beach. Let's go. 
We're ready to go. Pato Award is going to lead the field to the green, but hold on. He's plowed into the barrier in the final turn, and he's already destroyed the front suspension, at least on the left front there in the front wing as well. Torn all to bits. The green flag is going to go out anyways, but he's slow in front of everybody, and there's another car in the background with damage. That's Graham Rahal as well for that Rahal Letterman car as we all continue on, and you see Award trying to get out of the way. The disastrous start continues for the Mexican. And now, he tumbles down the order. You see Award pulling over to the right side of the circuit. Absolute heartbreak for him as we continue on ourselves settling into line. As you can see now, it's Christian Lungard out in front over Will Power, who moves through into P2. You got Lundqvist there just behind in that third position. Scott Dixon, the round one winner there, getting past Award, who's still in the way. There goes the teammate of David Malukas. It's not been a pretty start to the season, just in general for McLaren. Everyone stacking up here. I, right now, just uh, in front of my teammate of Felix Rosenquist, actually, was able to get past him. Uh, but it sounded like we're about to get a caution here. But hold on, Rosenquist dives one up the inside on that primary tire. We're on the red stripe to start this race, so more uh, grip uh, as well as more pace. But the caution is, in fact, going to come out due to the debris scattered across the racetrack there. So a caution immediately as we look at the replay. Oh my goodness. Pato Award just straight up drove into the barrier. I mean, there's nothing else to it. And and as well, this is Graham Rahal moments after doing the same thing, just not to the same extent. So Lungard out in front here. Uh, at the end of this first lap with a full course yellow. We cannot make it if we were to pit now on feel. Uh, just simply too many laps. But Will Power is going to come into the pits at the end of the next lap. Not exactly sure why he decides to pit. Uh, but Award, Ray Hall, and Scott Dixon as well in uh, for repairs. He's got a little bit of front wing uh, damage. And he would actually lose a lap. Dixon, your round one winner, will lose a lap. And this is a replay. So he's got uh, Award, of course, in the way. And, and watch this right here. He just knocks the left front in a costly mistake in the streets of Long Beach so he'll lose the lap Pato Awards going to lose multiple laps uh, Graham Rahal is also going to lose a lap but we're going to get back racing here now Christian Lundgaard leads the way on the streets of Long Beach he's got a win under his belt in the streets before in IndyCar that came at my home race actually last year 2023 in Toronto of course we don't have the streets of Toronto in iRacing so uh, we still have a Canadian date on the calendar we'll be headed to Montreal all instead uh, so that's going to be an exciting one here as everybody's already single file just kind of letting things settle in after a bit of a chaotic start I've settled in just behind the two Auto Nation rear wing cars my teammate of Rosenquist there's Scott Dixon coming out on the track but as well Kyle Kirkwood just in front of my teammate of Rosenquist there so uh, a decent start to the season uh, for both myself and my Meyer Shank teammate of course him having a bit more experience under his belt in an IndyCar than I have but we have some raw talent that we really want to of course utilize here uh, coming off of Indy Lights last season uh, as you can see battles already happening here Colton Herta he's trying to go through and take second position on Linus Lundqvist and he's going to do exactly that Kiffin Simpson in the background there and that number four that blue and yellow machine and then Joseph Newgarden just behind as well Newgarden doesn't quite seem to have the pace that he had in the first two rounds of the season where of course round one he dominated wrong strategy cost him a good finish, finish in the bottom three instead, but we saw him have great pace last episode in Willow Springs for the Million Dollar Challenge, lost that race late to a charge, or a, a hard charging Colton Herta, who was able to put the pounce on him in the closing basically five laps of that Grand Prix now uh, as you can see, P2 runs at 111.8, that's Herta, 1.5 seconds now behind as we start lap 6 30 laps of racing to go, still plenty of time as we currently run in the 20th position as now looking for an open... Uh, opportunity to overtake here our teammate of Felix Rosenquist you can see right now he's kind of struggling uh, to get up and off the corner so this is going to open the door for me I could use the push to pass right now but I'm not going to elect to it and I just wasn't quite confident enough yet in the car to really kind of push the braking zone so I was just kind of letting things play out naturally and just hoping an opportunity was going to arise to go for the overtake here and here we go now on the run down towards turn one lap seven again showing the nose but not confident enough in the braking and the stopping power in this car yet to actually go for it but these guys they're interestingly really struggling on the exit of quite a few of these corners. Look at this. I mean, they just kind of, it's like they're holding the brake pedal. And again, right here, we're right to the back 
of Rosenquist, but I couldn't actually go for an overtake right there. So now I'm realizing, okay, they're they're vulnerable on the exits here in some of these corners. So this is going to be my opportunity. And watch through this final turn. They sometimes get up and going like this, but then there's sometimes they don't. As I was trying to engage the push to pass, and instead I engaged the pit limiter, which was quite embarrassing. Fortunately, everyone's so stacked up in front of us that we immediately run these guys back down here on lap eight. But just look at the run we get on the exit of the fountain and, and through this whole section of track. I mean, there we go. Now up the inside of Rosenquist. I mean, so vulnerable. It's going to be an easy overtake. We'll go through into P19. Okay, the pace is good here. Keep it up. You hear our crew chief right there letting us know uh, the pace looks all right for the time being as we continue to pressure uh, the back of Kyle Kirkwood, who just doesn't quite seem to have the, the greatest pace here today. Now, as you can see, looking for opportunities here and there, they're not really showing up quite yet. But again, you can see right there, just not able to get the exit that I'm capable of here. And now just about show the nose couldn't quite make it happen here as we continue to utilize this red stripe alternate uh, tire, which is just a bit faster than those primaries currently. Christian Lundgaard still out in front over Colton Herta, who's not really able to reel him in right now. As you can see, everybody just kind of settling in. Uh, there's Joseph Newgarden once again, uh, as well Grosjean just a bit further down the order. How about Stingray Rob up here in the mix? Uh, having a great run. As that was happening, I'm using my push to pass to get up the inside of Kyle Kirkwood into turn number one, wheel to wheel. Nearly some contact there, but we slipped through. We'll take the position. Thank you very much, Kyle Kirkwood. That will move us up uh, another spot spot now as we'll get into 18th place right here behind now uh, a driver that went for a bit of a wild ride last episode in the million dollar challenge at Willow Springs that was Alex Rossi and here we are looking for P17 up the inside of the uh, McLaren driver and there we go easy does it up through into the next position P17 on the board and now Jack Harvey up next here and look at this through the final turn watch how slow some of these cars get up the off the corner. I mean, they're not even going. I mean, I was very just kind of confused as to why they were just exiting these corners so slow here at times and then sometimes they run okay but here we go an unexpected move up the inside nearly into the back of Harvey wheel to wheel if I remember correctly Harvey was the one we damaged our front wing off of uh, in round one back in road Atlanta but nonetheless drag racing at the end of the straightaway towards the right hander we continue wheel to wheel Harvey not making it easy now he sticks the nose up the inside again we'll continue side by side into the final turn this is where it gets sketchy con there between myself and him he backs out of it out of the final corner we'll go through into p16 here from long beach we continue to go on the move only lap 12 at this point it feels like we've put a, a lot of laps together as we're now behind christian rasmussen uh, as we continue to just put some pressure on these cars in front of us make moves here we go up the inside once again as we head to the straightaway easy pass into the now top 15 next up is graham rahal who's actually a lap down due to that damage he picked up at the end of lap number one or sorry start of lap number one right at the beginning of this grand prix before we had even started the first official lap here now but right to the back of Graham Rahal now he's got the red stripe alternates as well so he's got some speed in that car but here we go we're looking for a move up the inside you can see my confidence is starting to build under braking we'll pass Rahal not for a position but this will allow us to focus in on Lil Dave Malukas right here uh, who was well another McLaren driver that went for a bit of a wild ride in Willow Springs now putting some pressure on Lil Dave but it's not going to happen right there we'll stay in behind uh, in this 15th spot now as everyone's just kind of being really nice and, and respectful right now they're all just kind of settling in at this point uh letting things roll here on just lap 13 i'm getting run over from behind and ray hall has turned us and he's nearly gone up and over a big wild ride there and the safety car full course caution will come out here from long beach as we have an absolute stack up this is going to cause some cars to actually basically get sent back to the pit lane you see it right there i think two cars ended up getting hit with this this will be dealt with under caution but the caution is out i mean what a <laughs> idiot dude he just ran me over and he's a lap down yep i have no idea what he's doing and we'll take a look at the replay i mean there's not much to really explain look at him <laughs> he just drove right through me uh, and that's gonna of course put him basically out of the race as well because there's too much damage for him to continue uh looking from the top yeah i mean I, I don't know. He just 
never lifted, just drove right on through, uh, which is awesome. On board from uh, Rasmussen, you can see, my goodness, I mean, what is Graham Rahal doing a lap down? Now, this is where things get interesting. The leaders elect to stay out, but you can make it on feel from here. So an awkward timed caution is going to bring in basically the back half of the field, including myself. We're going to get four tires. We're going to fill it up on feel, uh, but a few moments of repair as well for it. it just very minor damage on the rear end. It was literally like a two second hold uh, and we were back on the uh, track here. So we're not going to be at the front of this group, but now this group we know can make it on feel while the leaders can't. So the leaders just got screwed, and that includes Joseph Newgarden once again. Uh, but we had to get out of the way for some cars that got despawned because we were letting them get their laps back because of the Graham Ray Hall incident before we went back green. So they would all come back around uh, to get at least on the lead lap. Alex Rossi there uh, as well, uh, involvement. So we will get back rolling here for the green flag from Long Beach now, and it's Christian Lungard out in front. But, I mean, unless something uh, happens again with a potential uh, caution... This is no longer the race for the win. Here goes Colton Herta trying to go around the outside and he will be successful. Colton Herta into the lead here on the streets of Long Beach there. As you can see, everybody already single filing out here, but the, the actual race for the lead is right there. David Malukas is, is currently going to be leading this race once everybody in front of him has to make their still yet to be made pit stop. So that's who everybody is racing. So suddenly, us getting turned around by Graham Rahal puts us uh, from a 15th or so running car now to a top five car potential and, and maybe even a, a potential winner because I mean David Malukas we were putting a bunch of pressure on him before the pit stop so or sorry before the caution so never say never we might have just gotten, you know, everything placed into our hands here. We got some drivers pitting as well here. Didn't this lap? It's a long fist as well. Uh, you got Stingray Rob. You got the rookie of Kiffin Simpson all coming in here. So uh, that still puts uh, Herta out in front. But look at this. Look at him not going at all out of the final turn of lap later. And that opens the door again for uh, Christian Lungard to go up the inside. They'll be wheel to wheel across the start finish line. And back to the lead goes Christian Lungard as now... Herta back down to P2 just doesn't quite seem to have exactly the pace he needs uh, as he fades backwards. Now in the background, Roman Grosjean there in P3 as well. And here I am putting some pressure on Kyle Kirkwood again up the inside of that Auto Nation machine as there's three Auto Nation cars here uh, right together. But we will, we will clear uh, the number 27 of Kyle Kirkwood and now try to focus in and on our teammate of Felix Rosenquist now coming to the final 15 laps of this race at this point and things are really just playing into our hands to absolute perfection at this point now uh, as you can see just up ahead is David Malukas just trying to make sure he's not going to get out of you know range basically now as you can see again Colton Herta at the end of this lap struggling again and now Grosjean to the inside it looks like going for that second position as in the background New Garden he's under pressure from Scott McLaughlin but there goes Grosjean into second but it really doesn't matter these guys are going to get relegated well down the order here in these closing laps of the Grand Prix unless they get a lucky timed yellow that allows them to have a chance and now there you see McLaughlin to the right side of Newgarden the two Penske teammates in Newgarden will stay ahead for the time being as we now put pressure to the inside of Felix Rosenquist using that push to pass to try and get ahead here now at the start finish line wheel to wheel clear already and now up into P12 and next up on the list to run down and pass is Santino Ferrucci. Rosenquist shows the nose in turn one not able to pounce on it here so we continue to follow through uh, for the rest of this lap and this is where we're going to get right to the back of Ferrucci uh, in that AJ Foyt machine David M uh, Maluka still uh, in the position to basically be the net leader of this Grand Prix here uh, as we continue on and here we go putting some pressure now on Ferrucci to the inside down the straightaway who's going to get back to the apex first it looks like it's going to be in favor of Ferrucci I back out of it let him have it for now uh, as we know there's going to be some opportunities here to get him as this, uh, these laps wind down. McLaughlin to the inside again of Joseph Newgarden. This time he'll clear him already. So Newgarden loses the position and now using my push to pass on Santino Ferrucci here out of the uh, final straightaway, uh, front straightaway to turn number one. And this should be what allows us to get through into that 
11th spot for Rucci nearly into the barrier and will clear him into the fountain. And there we go, up into P11. David Mulukas runs P10, but a net P1 right now. And you can see some battles right here in front of him. Marcus Armstrong in that green machine just ahead, nearly into the outside barrier right there. Uh, but he continues on. That was just behind Alex Pillow. And here we go, showing the nose on Malukas. But pit stops, they're about to kick off here for everybody uh, in front of Malukas, basically. So we're getting ready for that to, of course, happen. So kind of being patient, letting that kind of sort itself out here. You can see, though, a move of the inside of Malukas here through the left-hander. And now we are the net leader here in Long Beach. Things have fallen into place. Thank you, Graham Rahal, for wrecking me because we would not be in this, uh, in this position without that happening. Lungard comes into the pits, but actually Herda, Grosjean, they are going to stay out. Look at some of these guys. McLaughlin, Newgarden, the exiting the final turn at the slowest pace I've ever seen. And then they finally get it going. I'm just still confused at what's causing this. Pelo, he's going to come into the pits as well. Uh, as you can see, we are now lining up Marcus Armstrong towards the tail end of this lap, lap 26. I decided to not go for an overtake because I know he's pitting. And, and so is the rest of the cars in front of us that didn't pit on that last lap. And, and I mean, look how slow they are on the exit of the final turn. Everybody pits. We take over the lead with nine laps to go in Long Beach. But look in the rear view mirror. Here comes David Malukas. I believe he's using his push to pass. He's going to get right to the back of us and he's going to fire it up the inside. And that McLaren wheel to wheel with Low Dave. And he goes through to the lead contact there between himself and I. He gets the elbows out a little bit now. Malukas known for being aggressive on the racetrack. And now he gets a little bit aggressive for the lead. He left me no room there. It's all good. Get him back. We continue in behind Malukas. Fortunately, uh, we don't have any actual damage to the car done from that. And immediately, here's an opportunity. We're going to get the elbows out now. There's no playing around at this point. We're both fighting for our first win in IndyCar. For us, it would be a lot quicker than, of course, Malukas. Now, we're only in our second points-paying IndyCar event. But things have fallen into place and have given us an opportunity. Wheel to wheel into the final turn. We'll back out of it, though. Let Malukas have it here. But look at the exit for the final turn. He's just about brake testing us at this point now. As we exit that corner. We'll get the push to pass on. We have several more to use. Six of them to be exact across the stripe. Lap 28 of 35. Here's our opportunity. Both of us on the primary tire. Same amount of laps on our tires as well. Wheel to wheel into the turn one but we let Malukas have it right there. I wasn't confident enough quite in that moment to send it around the outside so we'll stay put there behind him uh, but just look again for the right opportunities and here we go again down the short straightaway towards the of course final section of this racetrack up the inside again. This was a bit of a late and aggressive move. But Lucas nearly into the barrier and he stays ahead once again. But we know that final turn, the exit, that's going to be the perfect opportunity. We're going to swing this car around wide on purpose to try and just build up the exit. And here we go. We'll swing to the right side of Malukas down this front straight away for the lead again in Long Beach. Now Malukas has not made it easy, but I'm confident we have more pace than him. It's just about actually getting clear and, and utilizing it and running away. We'll to wheel into turn one around the outside. This time, though, the job is done. We take the lead here in Long Beach, and now we're going to try and drive away with seven laps remaining in this Grand Prix. Just hoping for it to stay green at this point as well. I mean, we have such an advantage. It just seems like this car is able to get up on the exit of the corner, unlike everybody else around us. They just can't seem to quite go. So, uh, approaching six laps to go this time by here. Now, as we go through the right hand, actually a little bit deep into there, but no worries at all here now as we head towards this final turn. But uh, now you can see Malukas right to my rear wing, starting now coming to lap, uh, what, 30? Uh, we will be able to open that gap back up. Six laps to go in Long Beach. And now we have uh, just under a second of a gap. Actually, a little bit more than a second. Look at the gap really increase as we head down into turn number one. Now, as we slide, we overcorrect and we've crashed. I am so stupid, man. I am so, so stupid. We're out. It's race over. I just wrecked out from the lead after everything got handed to us on a silver platter. We were like a silver spoon fed driver for a second. My goodness. It's race over. I tried to get it back rolling, but I mean, yeah, the car is absolutely destroyed. So we just stop it there. It's it's race over. Um, on board replay, you're going to see what happens in turn number one right here. The back end kicks out. I correct it too much and into the barrier. Uh, embarrassing. Embarrassing. I didn't even need to be pushing as hard as I was. And yeah, that was, that was just awesome. Uh, just fantastic. So, 
They would get restarted with two laps to go in this Grand Prix. David Malukas out in front. Ferrucci second trailing just behind him is our teammate of Felix Rosenquist. Uh, and then you got Kyle Kirkwood. Uh, as well as how about Canapino in the top five. Colin Braun as well. Of course, a complete shakeup in the running order. There's Christian Lungard who really has dominated this race ever since lap one and, and taking the lead after capitalizing on Pato Awards' own issues after starting from pole. There's a word right there. Uh, but at the end of it, all uh, it's Malukas really just dominating these closing moments now coming to the final lap look at this coming to the white flag I mean they just don't get up off that final turn and that actually puts Malukas under pressure right here to start the final lap from Ferrucci who's within a few car lengths but he's not going to really be able to pounce on it quite like I thought he was going to be able to and now he looks to the right side here comes Rosenquist who's going to dive one up the inside here here he goes for second place and Felix Rosenquist takes P2 can he maybe put the Meyer Shank racing team on uh, the top step of the podium here today the answer is likely going to be no it's going to be really hard to pass David Malukas and that would be proven to be true in these closing laps now in these closing moments I should say of this final lap David Malukas through the final couple of corners after a wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle with me through a few laps is now going around the final turn at a very slow pace and just now get it going. David Malukas is going to come through to win round two of the season in Long Beach. Rosenquist ends up second place here. What a day uh, for Meyer Shank it could have been. It would have been two cars potentially in the top five. Unfortunately, it just wasn't quite meant to be. But it's Lil Dave Malukas winning here for McLaren. What a decision for McLaren to bring him on board. So you see the finishing order there with Malukas, Rosenquist, Ferrucci, Kirkwood, and Canapino. Your top five, but I mean, you know, big surprises up here due to the weird strategy with the awkward timed caution that was ignited, of course, by Graham Rahal. Uh, Kiffin Simpson, who had a top five run going, ends up outside of the top 10, unfortunately. Sting Ray Robb inside the top 15. Uh, but I mean, McLaughlin, a poor finish for him. Uh, a poor finish again for Newgarden. Pelo, the defending champion, Marcus Erickson, Scott Dixon, of course, and Pato Award, really some big names there with not so good finishes. That's really uh, getting the season off to an interesting start to say the least so uh, I'm curious to see how this is going to play out in the coming episodes here uh, after such a weird start to the season next episode we head to Alabama I'll see you guys then thank you for watching and have yourselves a great day